So it's about time I make another zombies video, and this is top five strange zombie mysteries of all time. Now, number five is going to be the least interesting, and number one is going to be the most interesting. Now, these are things that we do not have answers to in the zombie storyline, and are probably extremely important. Especially the like the last three are extremely important to the storyline. I'm guessing, but. We have no idea, and we, we really barely know anything about them. So let's just get started. Number five, the blank portraits on Kino. As, now, everybody knows that there's that one blank portrait on Kino. Nobody knows whose face goes there. You know, we have Rick Toff and Takio and Dempsey's face, but then right next to that is that blank portrait, right? And nobody really knows who that is. And what people may not know is that that's not the only blank portrait on Kino. There's actually, if you go upstairs in the starting room and you look up there, there's a bunch of missing faces to portraits. Like there's like I think four or five, which is really strange. Also, the same blocked out portrait can be found on the map five. Now, why do we see so much repetition of the same missing portrait, especially on Kino upstairs in the starting room? You have the same missing picture. You have the same missing portrait next to each other like five times. Now, think about it. If you were like setting up a museum or something like that, you want to put the same picture next to each other over and over like five times in a row. You'd want to like differentiate it and you would want to like, you know, put some variety in there. So why is the same picture put next to each other five times or four times in a row upstairs in Kino? Why is Treyarch like, why are they putting so much emphasis on this picture? Why is it so important? Now, for the longest time, uh, I believed and a lot of other people in the zombie community on YouTube thought that it was Victor Reznov who's supposed to, you know, his face is supposed to fit the right and it seemed like there was evidence because if you look at this picture right here on the left of Victor Reznov and you look at the portrait the empty portrait right there on the right it looks like their hairlines match up like the little corner the, the corners of their hair match up and it looks like his face would match perfectly especially like the angle in which they are both looking at they're kind of looking to the like they're looking to the left right so it seemed like the faces matched perfectly but when I was doing a little bit of research and trying to fit the two pictures together uh, last night it looks like the collars of the jackets or the shirts they're wearing do not match up, so it means that this is not the same picture. Also, another important question to ask is why are they so mysterious that their faces have to be hidden, and why are they so why are there so many portraits? It's not just one, like I said. If you go in the starting room, there's a bunch of others. So, what is so mysterious about them that their faces have to be hidden, and who kind of like blocked out the images of their faces? Also, why is the empty portrait? Why is one of the empty portraits like? Why did it get knocked off of the wall while the others are hung up on the wall perfectly? Number four, jump scare faces. All right, now on Mob of the Dead, if you in here on the tower you get this jump scare now this is really weird really I don't even know what to say like first of all why would Treyarch put a jump scare right there and why specifically whenever you point to the fireworks what kind of relevance does this guy's face have to do with pointing to the city or the fireworks also who is this man now for the longest time everybody said oh it was Russman but that has been debunked because a bunch of other youtubers basically they put Russman's face side by side with this and there was like some face differentiations, if that's a word. And yeah, it's been proven that this is not Rustman. Now let's go to Origins. Now if you point to the castle on Origins, it seems like this rotten like skeleton is just like looking at you and just sitting there, right? Like it comes out and it scares you. Now really something that the most interesting thing about this one is the eye. If you look at the eye first, I thought it was like a moon or something like that, like the reflection of the moon. But then I was like, wait, no, it doesn't really look like the moon. Maybe it's like one of the, you know, the blue zombie eyes. But if it was a blue zombie eye, then how come the other eye isn't lit up? And also another question is what kind of relevance does this skeleton have to do with that? Spe like you specifically pointing to the tower, what kind of like relationship or connection does the skeleton and that tower have? I'm going to look into that. Maybe it has to do with some uh, World War One history with some castles or stuff like that. I'm a, I'll probably put that in a five things you did not know about zombies if I end up figuring that out. And the thing is, like, people made a bunch of videos that got millions of views of, like, these scary, like, jump faces that come out of nowhere whenever you're pointing the, the sniper at, like, these certain spots. And, you know, it got a lot of people's attention, but people still do not know who and what this is. Number three, the Illuminati. Now this is where things get really crazy. All like my signature thing to talk about in zombies is the Illuminati. Illuminati, this Illuminati that some of my best videos are about zombies and the Illuminati and the type of connection that they have. Now we get Illuminati signs everywhere in zombies. We got Illuminati text on Darice, Illuminati signs on the walls of Varukt. We got the Illuminati language text on Darice and Ascension. We get Illuminati signs while doing the Ascension Easter egg. We get Illuminati signs all over your guns and Mob of the Dead when you pack a punch them. We get Illuminati signs on 
Origins, the Illuminati Templar symbol. We got the number 666 all over Mob of the Dead. And the craziest part is... We have no idea what the Illuminati has to do with the zombie storyline. Now, you have to admit, even if you don't play zombies, that has to, like, you just got to scratch your head about that. The Illuminati is everywhere in zombies, but we literally have, we don't have the slightest clue what kind of role they play in zombies. I don't know about y'all, but that kind of creeps me out. I mean, look at my last videos. Like, I, I, all I talk about is zombie this. I mean, Illuminati this, Illuminati that. But nobody knows what the fudge they're doing in the zombie storyline. That's pretty creepy if you ask me. Now, I'd say that the Illuminati is one of the top three themes in the whole zombie storyline the first the number one theme in the whole zombie storyline i'd say is science you know things to do with uh, element 115 discovery and time travel so science would be number one number two would be history and i'm talking about the conflict between the germans and the russians in america and the third theme in the zombie storyline would probably be the illuminati and all that virilia stuff the, the craziest thing is we've only heard the word illuminati a few times in the whole zombie storyline and all we know is that it has something to do with Richtoff. Now, obviously, Treyarch is trying to tell us something that the Illuminati has some type of really big role, but we just don't know it yet. Now, hopefully, we will find out in the next Zombies game, which is coming out at the end of this year. Hopefully, we will figure that out because this the Illuminati has been like way too much of a secret that's just been going on in Zombies, and we have no idea what it is. Number two, the mysterious quote, you must ascend from darkness. Now, the first time we saw this quote was back in 2008, Nacho Duran Toten. Of course, everybody, you know, everybody knows we saw this on the wall. And the thing is, nobody really knew what this meant when we first saw it, right? So we saw that in 2008. Three years later, we see this in Black Ops 1. In the Black Ops campaign, Reznov says in the level uh, of escaping Verkuda, he says, we must ascend from darkness or ascend from darkness. Walk is step two! Three years later, Black Ops 2, Origins Easter Egg. In the middle of the Origins Easter Egg, Samantha says, you must ascend from darkness. Now, everybody's really confused. First of all, the first question is, what is darkness in this instant? What does it mean by darkness? Now, really, people have a bunch of theories about what as you must descend from darkness is supposed to mean, but nobody knows like 100%. Like, there's nobody that actually 100% knows what you must ascend from darkness means. And the crazy part about this is that we see it so much in the zombie storyline. Like I said, we first see it in Nazir Tone 2008. Black Ops uh, 2011. We also see in the Kino teleporter while you're tell while you're like time traveling through time in the Kino teleporter, you get like the words "You must ascend from darkness" kind of like flash on the screen real quick. And I believe that actually happens in a bunch of other maps while you're time traveling. Now, some people say that "You must ascend from darkness" is um, a reference to the moon Easter egg from you, you know, like going up from the from the earth to the moon you know ascending but just because both of them have something to do with going up doesn't mean that there's a direct connection to both of them but that's a possibility but then again just like i said we only have theories we don't have answers number one the teddy bear now this one is actually extremely strange and first of all i'm talking about teddy now i don't know if teddy is the name of the teddy bear or if that's edward richtofen because according to the official call of duty wiki it says that teddy is another nickname for edward richtofen so for the longest time i thought teddy was referring to the teddy bear but according to the call of duty wiki it says that that's another nickname for edward richtofen but the thing is that's a wiki Anybody can edit that. But it's kind of strange because it's not only on the Call of Duty wiki where I see people calling Edward Richtofen Teddy. Also, on people's YouTube channels, they refer to Edward Richtofen as Teddy as one of his nicknames. Now, also something really weird is every time we hear or see something to do with this teddy bear, it's always like bad news. Now, let me tell you guys what I mean when I say every time we see him, it's something to do with bad news. First of all, we see Teddy when you have bad luck and you do not get a weapon from the mystery box. Number two, every time you see him, he is always bloody. Whenever you're trying to like find the easter egg song or whatever he's always like lying somewhere all covered in blood number three you could find him on Duris carrying the bowie knife and also you could also see him on ascension carrying that russian curved knife and number four in samantha's evil devil version of her room you can see teddy he's like really big and he's first of all he's covered in blood and he has like red eyes well he has one red eye and he like the whole room the whole environment just looks like really evil also whenever the mystery box is missing the teddy bear is in that place so you see what i mean whenever he always is correlated to something with bad news 
or something negative. We barely know anything about this teddy bear. I mean, we're assuming that it is Samantha's toy, but you see, it is much more than that. There is a lot of symbolism. This teddy bear symbolizes something huge in the zombie storyline, and I will be talking about symbolism in the next upcoming five things you did not know about zombies. But this teddy bear has some type of huge symbolism in the storyline that we don't know. And you know how in Die Rise and just like many other maps and just in the whole zombie storyline there's this whole idea of the greater phantom of this big leader that is much more powerful than samantha and Richtoff and the two people that basically control the zombies how there's some big master force over Richtoff and samantha and how this and how whatever this thing or person is and it is the phantom well maybe this phantom is this teddy bear maybe the teddy bear is behind this whole master scheme or something like that now, I know it's a crazy idea, but remember the whole idea and the whole easter egg behind Fear Teddy? Uh, like, only the real zombie fans will know exactly what I'm talking about. Back in Black Ops 1, when you take the first letter of all the DLC names, it spells out Fear. And then somehow, some people uh, on Black Ops 2, I think they took the last letter and they got Fear Ted in total, or it was like Fear Teddy. So maybe Treyarch is trying to tell us that, like, you know, fear this teddy bear. I know it sounds weird. It's a teddy bear. But like I said, there's a lot of, like, symbolism type of things in the zombie storyline, which I'll be covering in my next video. Also, another question to ask is, in Samantha's evil version of her room, why does Teddy only have one eye glowing just like the, just like the origin jump scare when it has only one eye glowing? Why don't these two faces have, like, uh, two glowing eyes just like the regular zombies? How come the zombies have two glowing eyes? But, um, like these things right here, they only have one eye glowing. I don't know if that's supposed to mean something or symbolize something again, but yeah. But yeah, guys, that basically concludes the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Five things you did not know about zombies. Number six comes out next. I do not have school on Thursday or Friday, so I'll get right to it. So hopefully, 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 hopefully the video will come out like, uh, Saturday morning or something. So yeah. That, like, number six is going to be a really good one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace! For that die Glock, a.k.a. the teleporter on Doris, was powered by the Vril Energy, which he got, according to conspiracy, from the Vrilia people. So die Glock was a Nazi, basically, UFO-slash-teleporter that was powered by the Vril Energy.